Welcome to video 8 in my DIY off-grid solar energy video series. In this video I want to talk about solar panels that are mounted vertically on the side of my house and fence. Vertical solar panels have an advantage that I have not seen popularized before and I want to share what I think is exciting information. Importantly the footprint of vertically mounted solar panels is very small no ground space is required. Next the balance of system costs for a vertical solar panel is the lowest since no framing racking or special hardware is needed such as would be required on a shingle roof or a yard ground array. Also the winter production for a vertically mounted solar array is very good, especially since snow will not accumulate on the panels. The last key takeaway from this video I hope is that I will show you that it's possible to heat a house in the northern climate and at one half the price of natural gas which would have been much harder without vertical solar panels. This image shows the south facing side of my home in November 2020 it got me thinking that if I mounted solar panels between these three windows I could collect some very useful winter time sun. So I did a study on what solar panel angle was best for production at 41.5 n latitude I found that 65 degrees up from horizontal was best but vertically mounted was not much worse at all. This chart shows the production in the three worst months of the year and a 90 degree south facing solar panel is very close in production to optimally angled solar panel. By March of the 2021 I began an experimenting with mouthing solar panels on the vertical faces of my house. This shows the very simple mounting method so called hanger bolts mount into the wall studs then aluminium channels mounts to the house and then also to the solar panel this way I can lay up the panel without holding the weight. There are 4 x 10,24 screws, 4 x quarter 20 screws, 1 x ground lug, 2 x hanger bolts and 8 foot of 3 quarter inch aluminium angle per panel. For a while I tested two 100 watt solar panels and measured the power they made relative to the angled solar panels. By April, 5 solar are installed. Then in May a total of 7 solar panels. Then on June 21st I have 10 solar panels mounted on the south face of my house. The PV Watts website says I should make about 80 kilowatt hours in the winter months, which is what I am trying to do. Also I look into mounting some extra solar panels I have so that they get more morning and evening sun. First I mount 5 panels so that they face east and by 7.20 am in July they are getting sun. Then I mount two more solar panels face west so they get late sun these are at 7.40 pm in July. We play sports ball in this area and I throw a ball as hard as I can and the solar panels are ok. To connect the solar panels I get low voltage direct burial wire rated for 15 amps 150 V DC and a good price. I bury this with an enable wire that activates the array level rapid shutdown so if the wire is cut it will shut down right away. The wire Wire is 6 inches below the grass. The video here shows the appearance of the east and west solar panels and also the larger south facing vertical solar panels, and how they enter the house. Now I want to calculate how vertical solar panels are the best deal right now. I conduct a study where I in the PV Watts website create 6 scenarios. I adjusted the parameters so that all the scenarios produce the same amount of energy every year 1000 kilowatt hours. So this table can be easily scaled to your power bill amount. The scenarios are for off the grid power only. On the grid power has different economy inputs like how much the power company pays you and any fees all of which don't impact me so this is for off the grid with a battery. The first scenario is with a two axis tracking machine this machine points the solar panel at the sun as best as is possible and makes the most power given the amount of panel as any scenario. The next one is a tracking machine but only with one axis so it follows the sun from east to west but not as it rises and sets above the horizon. The next two scenarios are fixed mount with two angles one for peak annual production and the other is more angled for maximum winter production. The last two scenarios are the subject of the video vertical solar panels facing south and then a split array with high half facing east and half facing west. The red arrow shows that for the two axis tracker only 600 watts power of solar panels are needed to make 1000 kilowatt hours. But for the east, 
West vertical solar panels 1400 watts power would be needed to make 1000 kilowatt hours per year, it sounds bad, but hang in with me. This red box highlights some of the balance of system costs for the different scenarios. Two axis tracking on six solar panels would cost almost $900 for these machines, likely more. Then as the mouth in gets simpler culminating the vertically mounted solar panels the costs are as little as $10 per panel. This next slide shows the cost of the battery needed to last through the night until the next morning's light can take over the load. The two different tracking solar panel mounts do a good job maximizing the late day sun and early morning sun, so they only need 1.5 kilowatt hour per 100 watt of continuous load. The next best option is the east. West vertical solar panels with a 1.6 kWh battery size. The fixed angled solar panels need the largest battery. This side shows the total installed cost of the solar panels the mounting technology and the battery of the right size together. I use 30 years as the lifetime and it's not likely that tracking machines will last that long but maybe they can. I show the two axis tracker has a lifetime cost of 7 cents per kilowatt hour. Then the one axis tracker is also 7 cents per kilowatt hour. The fixed angle mount arrays types are a better deal with the costs of 5.7 cents per kilowatt hour. However due to the low cost of the mounting hardware the vertical arrays are both 5.2 cents per kilowatt hour the cheapest of all. But how cheap must the power be to cost less than the lowest cost energy? The energy cost in 2019 are shown on this slide from US DO converted to better units of dollars per 100,000 British thermal units. This shows natural gas costs $1.04, propane costs $2.17. Now for the vertical solar panels when used with the 20 SEER heat pump costs only 48 cents per 100,000 BTUs half the cost of natural gas. This is the heat pump I am going to install these are in hot demand July of 2021 with the heat wave in USA West. But they are around 500 to 600 dollars consistently. I paid 660 dollars for one with Wi-Fi and another 150 dollars for 25 foot longer lines. My heat pump install will be in a new video. It's not done as of July 2021. Okay, so the summary here is how much energy all of this will make and how much money I can save. I enter the five different solar arrays that I am planning to have installed here. It totals 8520 watts power. 16x295 watt panels on the original screen porch. 2x295 watt panels vertical facing west 500 watts vertical facing east 1000 watts vertical facing south and then 1700 more watts in a future porch expansion with a 22 degree slope. This red box shows the percentage of my total needs that each array makes. The 16 panel screen porch roof makes 55% of my power needs. The 1 kW south vertical array will be 7% and the east west vertical will be 6.5%. The monthly production here is subtracted against the amount of energy that I need. The energy needs are available on the power bill from the electric supplier with a history bar chart on the paper bill. My total electricity spending was around $1730 paid for 12,000 kilowatt hours of energy. The end goal is to have a surplus of energy from April to August and then a minimum purchase of power in the winter. However my annual electric spending should be reduced from $1700. $130 to around $400. It's just not economical to meet 100% of the power needs off-grid with solar power with the knowledge that I have at this point.